Thanks for tuning into my Iowa Hawkeye football blog for Iowa's thrilling 15-13 victory over Michigan State in East Lansing. Now, Iowa moves to 8-0, including 4-0 in Big Ten play this year, being the first time 8-0 in school history. Ricky Stanzi leading a 70-yard drive in the final 1 minute and 32 seconds in the game, ending with that 7-yard touchdown pass to Marvin McNutt on the final play of the game. Now, Stanzi did finish 11 of 27 with only 138 yards, but it also included that miraculous touchdown. Adam Robinson having a stellar game for the Hawkeyes, being able to carry the load for 27 times for 109 yards. Now, although the offensive line did look inconsistent at times, they were able to give Stanzi lots of time during that final drive. Now, both defenses did did play lights out as I had predicted until about the final three minutes of the game. Adrian Claiborne once again is a beast from his defensive end spot, registering the Hawks only two sacks of the game and holding Michigan State to only 85 yards rushing as a team. Ryan Donahue also continues to be a special teams weapon, registering six punts for a 44.7 yard average, keeping the Michigan State offense at bay for most of the game. Now the Hawks have moved to fourth in the BCS standings, right behind Florida, Alabama and Texas who are 1, 2, and 3 respectively and ahead of USC, Boise State, and Cincinnati. Now the Hawks with only four games left including three at home against conference opponents control their own destiny as they try to reach a BCS bowl game for the first time since Brad Banks took the Hawks to the Orange Bowl in 2002 in his Heisman runner-up season. Now, Saturday's win didn't come without its injuries, unfortunately. Uh, Dace Richardson did suffer a broken bone in his left leg, which most, most likely will sideline him until at least the Hawks' bowl game. That is a best-case scenario. He was carted off the field. Uh, the injury did not look good. Uh, three other Hawkeyes were hurt during the game. Colin Sandeman and Brett Greenwood, more notably, suffered head, head injuries, Brett Greenwood was carted off the field uh, after him and Tyler Sash collided while making a hit. Uh, it was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, uh, which did unfortunately uh, bring an end to Brett Greenwood's night. Uh, he was carted off the field, as I mentioned, but was seen walking around the Hawkeye locker room as well as the Hawkeye sideline wearing street clothes. His status is yet unknown. Uh, Colin Sandman took one of the more vicious hits during the game. Uh, another helmet-to-helmet -helmet blow from a Michigan State Spartan, which was flagged for a 15-yard penalty. Uh, Brett Greenwood was not fully unconscious, but was able to walk off the field under his own power after he was woken up. On a, on a side note, Adam Robinson appeared to have a tweak in his ankle towards the end of the game. Brandon Weger did finish out the remainder of the carries as the Hawks went on to win. Now, my player of the game has to be Ricky Stanzi. Although he looked mediocre for most of the game, he did not turn the ball over, and he also, of course, led the 70-yard game-winning drive for the Hawkeyes. My play of the game, how could it not be the winning touchdown to Marvin McNutt? Interesting piece of fact, Marvin McNutt, after the final timeout of the, of the, of the half, went to his offensive coordinator, Ken O'Keefe, saying, give me the ball, I'm going to be open on this play. Sure enough, the slant from the left side by Marvin McNutt worked. He was able to shield his body from the defender, catch the ball, and go into the end zone for that touchdown. Now, something really weird was that, I understand it's a rule, but unfortunately, the refs made the Hawks try and kick an extra point after they had already won the game. I understand that it could possibly be part of the rules, but to me that's very disrespectful to the other team. The Hawks, of course, being the classy sort of school that they are, just knelt down to end the game and, of course, ending any sort of controversial decision where if the extra point was blocked, Michigan State might have been able to take it back for two points tying the game. So there was another reason to kneel down. Now, 
basically what this means for the Hawks is that they are in the national spotlight after having three very tough conference road games coming against Penn State, Wisconsin and now Michigan State and also including a nationally televised home game at Michigan in which they have all won. Yes it has not been in convincing fashion but that's not what the Hawks are about. The Hawks are about winning games any way they can. Now next week against Indiana will be another test albeit a lesser test than say Michigan State or Wisconsin but never count the Hoosiers out they seem to always give us fits so hopefully we'll be able to come out with another victory I will be traveling to that game so I'll have more of an, a uh, close-up perspective as I send you my blog next week Thanks for watching this edition of my Iowa Hawkeye football blog. Uh, again, tune in later in this week as I preview Iowa versus Indiana at Iowa City. Go Hawks!